I would assume that it just comes with the territory that at some point you're going to lose a load for whatever reason. A truck breaks down. Um, Sam, in your case, you are working with refrigerated trucks. So if, if the refrigeration goes out, you lose a load. Who eats those costs whenever a load is lost? And is that the reason why they're cracking down now on making sure that these carriers have insurance? We'll start with you, Tristan. So, you know, this can go multiple ways. It depends on what actually happened. You know, if it was a fault of the carrier, that's the purpose of them having that insurance that we can file a claim against. If it was a fault of the shipper, then the shipper eats that cost. If you're, you know, me as a carrier, um, if something happens to my particular truck and I have a load on it, I also have to figure out how to get that load back to the shipper or get it delivered. So, I mean, there's so many different factors. You know, if, it, if it's like natural disaster or something, you know, those are some things that will exclude a carrier from having to be um, held responsible for that freight. So it, it really just depends on the situation. And, and that's why I always say as a freight broker, we are problem solvers. We, we have to get in there and figure it out. Like, what actually happened? Okay, let, let's, let the carrier tell us the story. Give us documentation. Was it an accident? Was it your fault? Like, what really happened? So it really depends. It, it, it totally depends. It could be different from um, each situation. Um, Sam, have you ever lost a load? Woo, I'm so happy you came to me. I actually have a couple examples. So. <laughs> I bought um I bought a truckload of root beer. I have bought onions. I have bought tuna. Um, so what happened was um and so I think like the latest situation we had just bought kiwi. So like Tristan said, we're problem solvers. So I think me being able into be in the freight broker role has allowed me to kind of I think handle more of the problems on the carrier side first. So we had one issue where our trailer our the the temperature on our trailer just stopped working. So what we did, we actually asked the freight broker if we could take the load back, have them unload it, get our, get our trailer service, and then go back to pick up that load. Because it's like, I didn't want to be responsible keeping that load on and getting that trailer repaired with that on there. So we were able to, um, I guess, be proactive and not have that we were going to have to buy potatoes if that was the case. But with us getting the potatoes off and, buy, and fixing the trailer, like I said, you know, that saved me from a claim. So what me and my husband does, we try not to have any claims against our insurance. Like Tristan said, insurance is ridiculous. Um, one of my highest quotes this year was $77,000. So if I don't have to put a claim, I'd rather just buy the product. Um, the other product that we had to buy, we bought um, lettuce. So um, how much was it? Yeah, like $10,000 worth of lettuce. So... <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, and I can I don't like lettuce now. I don't like root beer. I don't like tuna. So um, what happened? It was a USDA issue, but again, I mean, it was on our trailer. So you know, again, we couldn't really prove that the shipper loaded it on there incorrectly. So what we did, we just bought the lettuce. Um, like I said, instead of a, a filing a claim, but like Tristan said, I mean, but if you can approve that the shipper loaded the product damaged or rotted or whatever like that and then see what COVID nowadays carriers can't even go on the dock to even look at the commodity but if you can prove that they loaded it like that then you can you're, you're pretty much protected on getting a claim filed, filed against you but if there's um proof that they can say hey you know which is called a tattletale they can see that my temperature was going up and down and up and down reading funny then we are it is put on us so for my um for my insurance, I have to have a hundred thousand dollars in cargo insurance to even protect that uh, you know to to cover any um losses on that trailer. Understood, <laughs> Tristan. You you alluded to this several times in the conversation, and I told you I wanted to come to this place because I wanted to cover some ground um before we got here. Can you talk to me about some of the biggest mistakes that from the broker side, brokers make, carriers make? And what are the common reasons that brokers just fail altogether? Number one, not being educated, just being honest. I mean, I love to talk to carriers. Like my conversations daily are with carriers because they can explain things to you. They can, t I mean, they've dealt with so many different situations um, from going to so many shippers and receivers. 
education is key. Like you need to understand the terminology. I, I don't tell people when they say, oh, well, I have absolutely no experience. Should I just um, take your class and be a broker? Like I, I want to ask them, why do you want to be a broker? You know, like, who do you know that's in trucking? What what made you decide to get into this? Because I don't just want everybody to come take our class because it's not for everybody. You know what I'm saying? But on the broker side, I feel like the brokers that make the most mistakes are the ones that's literally just put, worrying about putting loads on the board and worrying about their money. Like, you, you need to understand what you're doing and ask questions. I feel like when you go to a customer and you ask them for their freight, you're telling them that I'm going to do what it takes to get this done, but I'm also going to be responsible. Every All brokers are not responsible. They just want the money. They see that money coming in. You know, I'm moving a lot of loads, but you're not asking questions. I'm not ashamed to ask my customer questions. Can I come to the warehouse and actually see the operation so I understand what goes on? So I understand why you yell at me if I don't have a truck in there on time. Or so I also understand why all of the carriers are asking me for detention when it comes to your facility. Like, you got to know what's going on. Like, be in the know. Um, one of my carriers calls me his daughter. Seriously. Because we built that type of relationship. And it was, we worked together for over a year before I even met him in person. But it was because I asked the questions. Like, I want to know what goes on in the warehouse. Put me on Zoom. FaceTime me. Let me see what's going on. Tell me when I can come visit. I think it's just very important. And, and another thing is that I think brokers make the mistake of they want to get all the customers, more customers than they can even handle. You know, when you start in your book of business, get started and understand what you're doing. Like, set yourself up have a procedure in place, like understand the actual operations before you just go, like it's not a competition or a contest. Like Sam can tell you, it's documented. In my first year as a freight agent, I made six figures, but I didn't have a bunch of customers. I made that, I, majority of that money came from one customer. I think I, at the time I worked with four consistent customers and I was the person that was on the phone making cold calls and at one time I had like 30 shippers. But I had to get rid of them. I, I couldn't handle all of that, you know. And so another thing is getting a team. If you can't handle it, you don't necessarily have to get rid of that customer, but make sure you have a solid team so that you can take care of your customer as well as be fair to those carriers. Because if not, so, somebody's definitely missing out. You know, a low won't get deliver on time. You're going to spend a lot of money paying detention. It's like you're missing the important details. We have to be very pay, pay a lot of attention to details of what we do. I mean, I don't know if you've seen a rate confirmation, Sean, but it includes a lot of information. A good broker is going to give you that rate confirmation with a lot of details. Where do I pick up? Where do I deliver? Is there an, appoint, an appointment time? Is it a first come, first serve appointment? You know, um, it's so many details to it. So we want to pay attention to detail. We want to make sure we're giving the carrier all the information. We're being fair and not just money hungry because, it, you know, this is really a six figure business and it can happen quickly. It, it really can happen quickly. One customer can, can take you to six figures for sure. What's up, guys? Thanks for sticking with me to the end of the video. Truly appreciate you. If you like anything you heard here today, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And if you know anybody that can benefit from this message, feel free to share. Peace and love.